Right. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the session. Uh, this is called JavaScript, clearing the foggy areas. Um, logistics first. We don't have to show this, but it's like the FBI warning of Salesforce. You guys all see it, but you probably ignore it. Um, my name is Jonathan Baltz. I am a senior con uh, technical consultant at Ethereos. Um, certified, I'm a force.com MVP. Ethereos is one of the leading IoT uh, companies here. Uh, they're actually at the IoT area. Um, and I, I want to mention the Ethereos wearables challenge where you can register your wearables device. And by at the end of Wednesday at 10 o'clock, 10 p.m., whoever has taken the most steps um, through Dreamforce will actually win a Nest thermostat on Thursday morning. So just go to the, the, the Ethereos table there, register your, your device, and maybe you'll win a Nest thermostat. So a little thing, about, I'm going to talk about the agenda for today. Um, the reason I decided to do this session is because you know, throughout this whole time, you're going to hear a lot about JavaScript, and everyone talks about JavaScript, and it's becoming one of the most important languages, you know, in you know development as well as you know Salesforce development. And it's not, it's never been the easiest thing for me to learn, and there's always been some air, foggy areas for me, and I want to try to get through these, you know, four or five areas that I've you know listed, and how I got through them. <clears throat> so first is. I'm, whoa. Um, anonymous functions. Um, so here we have a function de uh, declaration. So here we have hello world. It's declared. It's named. And um, it, when it's called, it will, it will you know, do a JavaScript alert of hello world. Another way to put it is to assign a, the variable hello world to the function, or the function to the variable hello world. Um, this is a function expression. Um, the difference here is that the function itself doesn't have a name. The actual value of hello world is the function itself. So if you declare or if you give the hello world variable another value, the, the, anon the, the, the unnamed function, the anonymous function, will actually go away and it'll never be recovered again. Um, you can also assign a property of an object to a function. Um, this function doesn't have a name. The actual area of my object is the property of the object itself. Um, one difference about, an, um, one another big difference between name functions and anonymous functions is that you can reference that name function anywhere within the same scope of where the function itself has been defined. So here we have, I actually have an example here. So let's go to that. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> I'm using JS Fiddle. There we go. Um, so here we have. Oh no. <laughs> I'm going to actually rewrite this here. And so I'm instead of having it here, the name function, or instead of having the function variable. I'm going to have a name function of hi there. So hi there is there. So if, if I, right now, if I save this, of course, and even before I defined the function itself, I can still click on hello world. Do I have an error? Oh. No. Oh. <laughs> Wait, go back to the code. Okay. Like I said, I'm not the best JavaScript developer out there. <clears throat> okay. Okay. 
this is not working. So the point of this whole you know, demonstration, if it worked itself, um, would be, actually, that's why I have it in the slide, would be wherever I um, call the hello world function, even before the function itself has been declared um, or defined, is that regardless, it will um, have the same result in both, um, both times. But if I, uh, if I assign the function to the, vari the assign the variable of the function to the variable hello world, if I call it the first time, it will come out as undefined because the variable itself has not been initialized. So it's the same way any variable works in JavaScript. Um, as you know, so if you don't define or initialize the variable, when you call that variable, it will return undefined. <clears throat> um, so why use anonymous functions? Um, they're used to create private scope um, <clears throat> and <laughs> so private, uh, private scope and temporary, pri temporary and private scope. So it's something if you just want to call something once, um, you can just use it then. And also it's very important in code brevity. So if you want to, for example, on a, on a click event, you don't really have to use a named function within this click event. You can just you know, have the anonymous function be the result of the click event itself. <clears throat> and also, it's often handed in closures and recursions. Uh, recursions are functions that call themselves, whereas closures are functions that are returned from another function call. And I could go more in depth into both of those, but each one of them can actually have its own session here by itself, and we don't really have that much time. <clears throat> so the second item I want to talk about is has two names. Um, one is called, you know, it's either known as a self-executing anonymous function or immediate, in, immediately invoked function expressions. Um, on the internet and in most books, the immediately invoked uh, function expression or iffy is used more, more, um, more than the self-executing you know, anonymous function because a the function's not really executing itself. While it is being executed, it's not executing itself. Um, as it, and also, um, in the immediately invoked function expressions, um, you can actually have an anonymous function or a named function um, be immediately invoked. Um, so these functions are, are expressions are a it's a function expression that is not assigned to, you know a variable or is not assigned to a variable um, to be ex executed later because it's executed immediately after being um, written or declared. Um, <clears throat> and so, so, the, so some background around, around these iffies. Um, so here we have a uh, variable being assigned the function, uh, the anonymous function. And to call that variable, or to call that function, we do foo print out open close parentheses. So, from this understanding, if, if foo is the variable and it's it contains the value of this function, you would think that having function open close parentheses in the code, and then another pair of open close parentheses would would work. But unfortunately, you get a syntax error here because um, <clears throat> when you have function. In, in JavaScript, the word function, if it's in the global scope or within another function itself, it is the parser is expecting it to be a function declaration. So <clears throat> when you write function, the <clears throat> par JavaScript parser is going to expect a name to be declared the, uh, of that the name of the function. And so when you it hits the first open parentheses, it gives you a syntax error, and that's where you get the error. Um, so to get around this is you actually contain the function itself within a pair of parentheses, because within a pair of parentheses, um, you can't have um, statements or you know, function declarations are not allowed within parentheses. 
So it knows that it's, it's, that what's in the, inside the parentheses is, is an expression itself. <clears throat> the main point of these immediately invoked function expressions is actually to maintain data privacy. And by data privacy, I'm not really talking like keeping data private from other users or whatnot. It's to keep the variables and, and anything else that you write within your JavaScript private from the global scope. So, for example here, for example here, whenever you start writing a so, um, JavaScript, you start you, you write a line like var foo equals two, you're actually writing, you're declaring that foo variable within the entire global scope. So, if someone else within your development uh, community or development uh, team has already, you know, or initialized a foo or written a variable foo you actually just reassign that variable. And <clears throat> what this does, and it, you know, so by doing the immediately invoked function expressions, you're actually avoiding name collisions like that. Um, one of the things about this is that, um, if you think about it, when you're writing JavaScript within Visual Force, you actually might hit this because you don't know the variables that you're writing and you're declaring. You don't know if anyone else within that org has already written or declare that variable. So this is actually one of the good ideas to do within Visual Force, so that you don't um, overwrite someone else's JavaScript and don't and you avoid the the name collisions. So, <coughs> excuse me. The next topic we're going to talk about is the DOM tree. Um, so here we have a DOM tree. So this is a bunch of tags. We have the element tags here attribute tags and text tags. Um, <clears throat> so when you want to sort of move, you know, move or you know, locate a, a different tag within or a different area within the, the, the DOM um, based on the relationships to a different uh, node, sorry, it's a node, not tags. There, let's go back. So text nodes, attribute nodes, and element nodes. Um, <clears throat> So trans transversing the, the node, the DOM is sort of, you know, uh, selecting a a node based on the relationship of the node that you know. So if you do a select by ID, you by transversing the DOM would be to find another node based on that one selector. <clears throat> so right here we have a parent node. So the 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 um, unordered list elements is the parent node to the list item element here. And so based on that, the children of the unordered list element are the list elements um, below, highlighted in red. <clears throat> and so you can go to first child, if you know, if you selected the unordered list node, you can get to the first child and then last child based on the relationship of the um, <clears throat> The relationship of the list item to the 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 parent node itself, um, and then from one list item in blue, any item or any node that is based on the same level as that one um, item, the selected item or selected node in blue, is a sibling. And so, in relation to the, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, much better. Um, so in relation to the list item in blue, uh, the first one in red is the previous sibling, and the one next one in red is the next sibling. So by doing this, you can actually transverse and go through a different list of, of items that are in your DOM tree um, without selecting each one uh, individually. <coughs> so the next thing we're going to talk about are events. Uh, JavaScript has a predefined um, Category of events. Uh, here we have mouse events, which are the click, sort of click and uh, click events, for example. Keyboard events by the, the user uses the keyboard. Object events, um, something that happens to an object if it's being um, manipulated or whatnot. Form events, if someone submits a form or enters data into the form. Uh, user interface events, something occurs in the user interface if you're adding a. Um, <coughs> 
adding a item to the, the user interface itself. And then mutation events are sort of changes to the tree itself, uh, adding elements, um, manipulating elements, removing elements, so on and so forth. There are also a bunch of mobile elements that are defined um, for mobile devices, like when you're you know, tapping it or shaking it or the assault, um, geolocation assault, you know, or geo assault, you know, things, <laughs> if, you move, if you're moving the device around. Um, so event handlers are the original ways to um, handle, you know, to handle events. Um, an event has occurred when a user actually uses or does something within the the application itself. Um, JavaScript code can register a handler function, a handler function, which is triggered when the event occurs. So on here, you have an element, and the on event occurs. And by the on event occurring, the next the anonymous function is actually triggered. The only problem here is that only one function can be assigned to a single event. So this means only one function can occur. So with your, when you're using event handlers, only one function can be tied to the click event for a node. <clears throat> so I'm not saying like one event, one function per click, but if you have one button, the, there only can be one function tied to the click event for that button. The new way of, <clears throat> of doing this is called event listeners. Um, this is a more modern approach, and it binds an event to the DOM element and designates a function to execute based on the event that occurs. So here you have the element, and you add an event listener based on what events you're listing in the code. So, you, for example, you would have add event listener, click, and then this function. <clears throat> the drawback is that it's not um, supported in older browsers, so IE8 and before that, it, you can't actually use event listeners um, in older browsers like that. IE9 and so forth, you can actually, event listeners are wide open. <clears throat> um, so the last item, the last parameter in a event listener is a optional event or optional parameter, um, which is the event flow. And for false, it's, it's bubbling, and for true is capture. So this is one of the kind of most confusing items within JavaScript of bubbling and capture, or bubbling and capturing. <clears throat> um, the default is the bubbling, which is sort of, so event bubbling is the concept, it uses the concept of, of event uh, element relationships. By bubbling, what it does is that it will, an event occurs to one element, it will bubble up through the DOM tree, so from the list item to the unordered list, uh, the list, the list item node to the unordered list n item node, and, or unordered list node, and so whatever, so if there's an element, or if there's an event handler, event, event listener that's defined for the higher nodes, those ones will be um, <clears throat> triggered as well. So it goes up the node, or up the tree, um, based on, um, it goes up the tree to the parents, to the grandparents, and so forth. Um, the alternative is going down the tree. So what this does for event capturing, it will, if a event is triggered on a list item node, it will actually go all the way to the top and find the element or the event, the event, the event handlers or event listeners for the nodes going down or for the nodes going down and then trigger those. So the, the idea is going up, the bubbling, the bubbling option is going up versus the capturing going down. Um, so why does this matter? Well, because in HTML, being a markup language, everything is sort of built in a tree and, and, and nested um, within the code. And so the odds of having a element or an event handler or event handler or event listener on the parents, the parents and the grandparents um, are very high because you do, you don't know if there's a event listener on a um, <clears throat> on the form. Uh, you know, if there's a form, a button on a form, you don't know if there's a event listener on the form tag or the form elements 
and then going up to the body, to the document. Um, <clears throat> so, and so if you're, if you're hovering, for the example I have here, if you're hovering on that button, you're also hovering on that form and on that body and on the document itself. Um, all modern browsers default to event bubbling. Um, and like I mentioned here, most resources that you read about mention that IE8 and I, older versions of Internet Explorer don't support uh, capturing, but older versions of every browser, like Opera, for example, doesn't support capturing as well. The last topic we're going to talk about is the this keyword. Um, this is a, this the this keyword. So this is going to be very confusing. The this keyword is very common in a lot of uh, development languages. Um, when this is being when this is in code, it's actually referencing only one object. Um, and so the and so when it's used in code, it's actually only referencing the object from where the code, the object for where that function is, is located. <clears throat> so if you, you, and if you use the this keyword in the global scope, the global object is this. Um, so it's very a bad, you know, a bad practice to actually use the this keyword in the global scope. So we kind of frown, you know, everyone frowns upon using this outside of an object or outside of a function. <clears throat> um, one thing I didn't, I kind of always confused functions and methods, but from what I was reading, a function defined inside of an object is a method. So I kind of never really understood that. So, um, so in a method, this is referring to the, the object itself. <clears throat> so here's an example we have. So this, this is an example of this is an example of this in a, in a method of an object. Um, here we have the object, um, my object, and length aside with, and width aside. An area is an anonymous function that returns this dot length aside times this dot width aside. Another way to write this, if you want to, is actually returning my object dot length aside times my object width aside. <clears throat> so, you can actually use the object name itself, or you can just use this um, as a shorthand for writing the code. So an example we have here is I have the variable width defined in the global, in the global um, scope, in the global namespace, and then an object with a property of width defined within the object. And then I created a anonymous function uh, assigned to the variable display width um, which will which all which, which is only going to do is going to write this dot width. So in the first example here, I just called the display width, and so what display width is doing, it's calling or it's displaying the width of the global object or the global namespace, which is 600. The second line underneath that is I define a property of show width as the variable display width. And so if you go up to the, the, the middle, display width is actually an anonymous function that is defined of this dot width. So <clears throat> within the object, so if I call the, the show width um, function or the show width property, display width is, you know, the code, the show width, like, it actually will have this dot width. And so in the, this example, this is referring to the my object object, which is the width is 400. So you have to understand like the whole area of where your code is being declared and where your code is written to get a better understanding of what this actually means. Um, and that is actually just a, about it. So anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask them. Thank you very much.